Okay, how do I look? Do you recognise me? Can I go out the street? I've just got to go out now uh, to meet some some people. Um, after these, uh, since these interviews have been taking place, I've been recognised in the street far too, far too often, far more often than is convenient. I need to get to this place without being accosted, and just get there, do do what I have to do there, and then come back. So, tell me, it's very useful you being here because um, how do I look? Do I, can you can you recognise me? I mean, it gives it away a little bit because I've got this hat on which does disguise me, but it's on such a rakish angle, such a stylish angle, it's probably going to give me away slightly, but um, the expensive sunglasses also probably do uh, sort of lend me the air of the distinguished person. But I think, wouldn't you agree, I am suitably disguised. Oh, it's almost impenetrable, this disguise, isn't it? So, yes. Okay. All right. Thanks for your help. Yeah? So, um, we've got to be quick, because I, I do need to be there in, in, in minutes, really. So, anyway, we've... Um, we were talking about, uh, well, we discussed horses and their merits and said, no, we can't use horses. And we've decided on the human form, haven't we? That's right. So what we need to do now is get some human beings in here. Now, I can hear you all clamouring already. You know, I've just mentioned the word and you're already trying to get over here. You know, to drape yourselves naked around and be sort of my models. Um, and for which I'm very, very grateful. You know, don't, don't think that I'm not sort of uh, appreciative of your, your advances in, in there. Um, I may quite possibly contact you, but what I do need you to remember is that you are all, you know, beholden to husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends, and they won't appreciate you being on your own in here with me, you know, a, a man known for his amorousness. Um, so, you know, that may be awkward. Um, so, leaving you aside just for the time being, who else? Well, talking about amorousness, um, I am, you may be surprised to know, going out with a, a, a young lady, um, a woman, who's, uh, uh, she's the Lady Edgerton Warburton. Um, she probably won't thank me for telling her, telling the world. Well, she will, I'm sure she will, actually. But anyway, um, I've asked her on numerous occasions to come on over here to the studio and be my muse, you know? What, what, what honour can, can, you know, top being the muse of a, a, you know, a preeminent figurative stone sculptor. Uh, they're, they're nothing. You'd, you'd think there would be nothing to compare. But anyway, she has um, treated the suggestion with nothing short of abhorrence, you'd be surprised to know. And that is because it turns out that she is very, 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 very sensitive to the slightest, almost undetectable draft or chill in the air um, she clearly is uh, meant to be living in the sub-saharan desert uh, but anyway she's 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 always just um, regarded coming over here to the studio with, um, with yeah, she just point blank refused so i've had to abandon that idea and uh, look elsewhere the very first uh, um, opportunity uh, most artists from antiquity right up to the modern day is to go on down to that side of town to that street you know the sort of street i'm talking about where there are people quite happy to uh, take off all their clothes for you um, for a very fair price i have to say 50 quid we'll get uh, a young lady or gentleman up here for an hour maybe an hour and a half and uh, these, these these individuals are usually very bendy as well i've noticed you can have them bent in any direction uh, or position that my statue might require and, um, and they're very accommodating there and, and you know they're always encouraging you to explore other avenues other um, offerings that they may be able to uh, to to to, to um, sell to you and um, if you're interested in you know the, the services they offer then um, well, we're going, off, we're going a bit off piece there. We'll talk about that another time, maybe. Um, so, ideal, you would have thought, wouldn't you? Um, you know, uh, but unfortunately, there is this thing called jealousy, which always raises ugly head, particularly with among those who we are supposed to be, um, you know, attached to in a, in a romantic way. 
Uh, so there's no, there's no way around that really. I, mean, I, I have tried to point out the ridiculousness of their jealousy. Um, the fact that I'm, you know, a very uh, sexually orientated person being in the studio alone with a you know, professional sex worker. Um, I don't think that should really raise too many um, suspicions. But anyway, it does. I think so. So, go on from there. Again, uh, uh, talked about historically. That's where um, artists have gone to, and historically also they've they've galloped off down to the local morgue, and uh, for a few ducats or groats or whatever it is, they'll uh, avail themselves of a few body parts. Quite often, if they're lucky, a whole cadaver. Now I have gone on down to the local morgue here in Reading, and. Um, I have been met with, what shall I call it, officiousness, let's call it. I think that's the nicest term I can think of. Uh, gentleman down there, if we indeed we could call him a gentleman. Unshaven, probably unwashed creature. Uh, absolutely refused to allow me any body parts for any money I offered him. In fact, he seemed to be quite insulted by me offering money. Um, I certainly didn't expect to be able to borrow any of them for free. But anyway, um, he asked me to leave the premises straight away and uh, would call the the, um, the, uh, the security if I didn't leave immediately. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I swelled up when uh, you know, I was not used to um, people not being uh, willing to help me. And uh, of course, I gave the, the gave him the usual. Well, have you no idea who I am? And uh, he, he he feigned ignorance, of course, as they do in this case. In these cases, and off I went in high dudgeon. So um, yeah, that that that's not a possibility. So you know, three three out of three choices so far, all drawn a blank. Um, the only place I can guarantee I'm allowed to go to is down to the. Um, the Rising Sun Arts Centre, where every week there's a young lady or young gentleman strips naked for um, for life drawing artists, and they've got a bar downstairs, so I can um, pay for a nice supply of uh, of um, wine, take it up to the drawing room, sit there beside a nice open fire, lovely music that the students are playing down there as well, because it's usually students and a few gentlemen down there as well, absolutely got a clue how to draw but they turn up every week um, uh, almost as if they're displaying their inability to draw and um, yes I don't know why, why they turn up every week but they don't get don't improve anyway that's neither here nor there so uh, that's fine um, unfortunately you know I, I, you know you get to draw and you get an idea of the, the human form and I can memorize it and use my sketches bring them back to the studio and they're a good resource material but it's still not the same as having actual flesh in the studio with me that's really important i need to have the flesh there and the stone there flesh stone look chisel look chisel you know it's just it's just you just have to have it so where do we go now well anyway we are in the 22nd century uh, 22nd 21st century and um we are awash with technology and we have here I don't know if you have it in your place, but we have the Wi-Fi here. And so, of course, I've got access to the Internet and all its wonders. And um, my favourite calling point in the world of the Internet is the Internet pornography. There I have, I have access to any amount of uh, female or male or any other combination of human form that you can imagine. From all over the world and there they are happily joyfully displaying themselves to the onlooker the only drawback with internet pornography of course is that you know um, you very often don't get the, the whole form in its entirety because there's either something or someone hanging out the back of it or him or her and that can be distracting and it can just get physically get in the way of what I'm trying to see but apart from that it's a brilliant idea. Fortunately, now I you you tell me what you think. 
an adolescent can go to a double geography lesson, let's say, and they can be listening to the teacher rabbiting on over there, meanwhile just scrolling through internet pornography on their mobile phone during the class. That is seen as cool, funny, and rather, you know, good, good on you. I access the internet. You know, someone my age and of my stature, internet pornography, and I have detected an air of, you know, the disapproving, let's say. Why should that be? I don't know. But this air of disapproval pervades and it infects my whole professional life and um, gives me constant anxiety. So, for example, time and time again I'm exhorted to go down to schools, colleges and the university here in Reading to uh, teach, hopelessly teach these, these, these teenagers um, something about figurative stone sculpture and the actual act of carving stone. As I say, a hopeless endeavour, uh, but I go down there, you know, to do my bit for society and um, very often when I arrive, well always when I arrive, they'll ply me with coffee and uh, that's all very good so long as it's not instant coffee of course. Um, uh, strangely enough they never offer Danish pastries which I don't understand because coffee without Danish pastries is just, is that a thing? I don't think it is, is it? It must be just a school thing I suppose. Anyway, um, but of course half an hour later nature's worked its course and I'm, please miss, please miss, I need to go to the toilet miss and off I, I set off. Um, but that's, uh, <laughs> that causes absolute alarm everywhere. You know, teachers scuffling around, they grab hold of me, where do you think you're going, sir? They say, and uh, they, you know, I, I'd say, explain and say, oh, well, you need this on. And they put this sort of chain thing around my neck with a little label on it, and then they'll escort me. One or two teachers will escort me all the way, I mean, literally all the way to the toilet. And, um, uh, so I'll perform the, the natural function. They're stood just outside, listening to all the noises, I suppose. And, uh, you know, God bless them. And then um, off we get march back. Now, all the time I'm being there, I'm kind of on the way down to the loo and on the way back, I feel that I'm being prevented from, you know, they feel that they're present, preventing me from suddenly leaping upon one of these disgusting adolescents, these teenagers, for whatever reason. I don't know if they think I'm going to eat them or, or, or somehow interfere with them, which is the most, you know, bizarre idea I can think of. Teenagers, for God's sakes, you know. Anyway, so that's, that's that. And so I, I am made to feel like, you know, an an unnatural being when I go into schools. Another example, and this is the anxiety then causes strange things to happen in me. I went to, I was asked to go down to uh, a school. Um, who I won't mention the name of the school other than say at St. Joseph's. And um, uh, the head of art asked me to go down there with serious discussions, to seriously discuss talking about um, uh, um, setting up a stone carving centre there. And I was going on about, you know, the virtues of, uh, we were sitting down over a little table, going on about the virtues of sculpture and, and why it's such a fabulous, fabulous, you know, uh, subject for, for, for students to study. And, um, and uh, going on, going on, going, words coming out, words coming out, and suddenly the word titty, titties just came out. God, titties just came out. I don't know why. I haven't got a clue why. Um, but it came out. Anyway, needless to say, um, I didn't hear back from the school ever again. So anyway, so now you know what I'm, uh, I'm labouring under as, a, as, a, as an artist of my stature. Uh, and and uh, I've got to go now. But um, next time, which is tomorrow, isn't it? I will talk about, um, we'll be honing in on the subject, the main subject of our attention, namely the, the derriere. And we'll talk about that then. Okay, bye now.